Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to Christian Heritage Worship Center. We're so happy to have you with us this morning. We're glad that you tuned in to us. This is a new year and it's a new day. And I'm declaring that it is a new season, a new season in your life, a new season in the body of Christ. So let's thank God for that. Amen. Join me in prayer this morning as we open up this service. Father, we just come to you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for a brand new day a brand new season, Lord. We thank you, Father, Lord, for new revelations and deeper revelations in you and of who you are, Lord God, and whose we are. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the faithfulness, Lord, of your Holy Spirit that resides in us, Lord, that developed in us the peace of God. We have the shalom of God and we have the zoe of God. We have the peace and we have the life of God. We thank you, Lord, that you are leading and guiding us and instructing us, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that you're Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God, our provider, that you've already made provision for us, your children, Lord. And as we seek you, Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you continue, Lord, to grow us up in you and to mature us in you, Lord. And we want to receive what you have for us this day, Lord. Anoint the word when it comes forth, Lord God. Let it fall on good ground and give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying unto the church this day. And all that agree with that prayer say amen and amen. God bless you. If you would, get your Bibles and open it up and turn with me to Psalms 121. Amen? The 121st Psalms. And it reads, and this ought to be your prayer, I will lift my eyes towards the mountains. Where will my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip. Your protector will not slumber. Indeed, the protector of Israel does not slumber or sleep. The Lord protects you. The Lord is a shelter right by your side. The sun will not strike you by day or the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all harm. He will protect your life. The Lord will protect your coming and going, both now and forever. Amen, amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. May he sanctify it in our hearts and our souls and let it bring forth fruit unto God's glory. So come along with me into praise and worship and let's just praise the Lord.
We're inviting you today to join us in services with the pure hearts to receive today's message. Come with an open heart and an obedient spirit. God will meet you where you're at. May the spirit of revelation, knowledge, and the power of the Holy Spirit resides in you and in our service. Good morning and Happy New Year, Christian Heritage Worship Center. To God be the glory. <clears throat> I give honor to your pastor, Bishop Clive Joe, and to First Lady Cece Joe. I'm so thankful for the opportunity to share with you again in this new year, 2021. You, like so many of us and others, had friends, you had family members, church members, acquaintances, and co-workers that didn't make it to 2021 due to COVID-19. As we pray, I'm asking for God's hand of mercy to sustain those who have lost loved ones during such a difficult time. Let's pray. Father, indeed, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. We thank you for allowing us to see 2021. God, if we don't know someone that was affected by the virus, God, we know someone that was taken because of the virus. But Father, those that were left behind, I pray, Father, for strength in the name of Jesus. I pray for peace in the name of Jesus. And today, God, as I bring forth your word, I ask for your hand of mercy, God, to be upon the hearts and the minds of your people. Have your way, God, have your way as only you can do. And I will give you praise and I will give you glory in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. As I sat and I thought about, God, what is, 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 what is it you'd like for me to share with Christian Heritage? worship center. And what God put in my spirit was something that he gave me, I think about two, three years ago. And it's called God's vision for his church. Can I say that again? God's vision for his church. Let's look at the word vision. The word vision, as defined by Merriam-Webster's dictionary, you know, it's a noun, is the ability to see, sight or eyesight. Something that you imagine, a picture that you see in your mind, something that you see or dream, especially as part of a religious or supernatural experience. <laughs> that was a mouthful, wasn't it? Now, according to Chuck Swindoll, he says, when I think a vision, I have in mind the ability to see above and beyond the majority. Isn't that something? Let me say that again. He says, when I think of vision, I have in mind the ability to see above and beyond the majority. How many of you, let me ask you this question. How many of you know God's vision for this church? Not you, the church, the people, but this physical church, Christian Heritage Worship Center. I tell you what. Let's take a few minutes and give this some thought. If you're listening or watching and you have a pen and a piece of paper, you can write the vision down for Christian Heritage Worship Center, or you can just kind of, you know, mull over it in your mind. Just give you a couple minutes to think about it. What is the vision for this church? Okay. Now that you've either thought about it or you wrote it down, now I want you to think about the role that you play in God's vision for Christian Heritage Worship Center. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, what is that last part? Happy is he. Hallelujah. You're going to hear me quote several influential, influential leaders and authors today. The first one I want to quote is Rick Warren. And a lot of you know Rick Warren. He's a renowned author of the devotional, The Purpose Driven Life. Uh, it was published back in 2002 and it sold over like 30 million books back way back in 2007. Well, you know what Rick Warren said? He says, I'm often asked, is there any single denominator that you can find in every growing church? 
Is there a single denominator that you can find in every growing church? You know what his response was? He said, I've studied churches for many years, read about them. I've even visited them. And I've discovered that God uses all kinds of churches in all kinds of different ways, in all different methods and style. But guess what? But there is one common denominator that you can find in every growing church, regardless of the denomination, regardless of the nationality, and regardless of the size. Any idea? He said, that common denominator is a leadership that is not afraid to believe God. Hmm. The common denominator is a leadership that is not afraid to believe God. And you know what he calls that? He calls that the faith factor. Write that down. He calls that the faith factor. Nothing starts happening until somebody starts dreaming. Agree? Every accomplishment started off first as an idea in somebody's mind. It started off as a dream. Yeah, it started off as a dream. It started out as a vision. It even could have even started out just as a goal. He said, if you don't have a goal for your church, your default goal is to remain the same. If you don't have a goal for your church, your default goal is to say that, I mean, just to say, stay the same way that you are. Mm. If you aim at nothing, guess what? You definitely going to hit nothing. Hallelujah. A church without a vision is never going to grow. Let me say that again. In this new year, 2021, hear me, a church without a vision is never going to grow. Hallelujah. The word of God says where there is no vision, the people perish. So you, Bishop Clyde Joe, as the leader and the pastor of Christian Heritage Worship Center, you must have God's vision for this church. If there are any other pastors or, or listeners listening via Facebook, you must have more than a vision for your church. You must have more than a vision for your church. But what did you just say? What I'm saying is you must, must have God's vision for your church, for your ministry. Hallelujah. The first task of the pastor is to set the vision for the church or the, whatever organization he's a part of. He must set the vision. Think about this. As a pastor, and if you're pretty smart, you can always compensate for your weaknesses. And what I mean by that is uh, you can always hire people to, to do things or to, to delegate, to volunteer, so things that you can't do. If you're not good at counseling, you can find people, you know, who are good at counseling. If you're not good at, you know, handling the administration and the details, you can find people to handle administration and details. But there's one thing as a pastor you cannot delegate. Any idea what that might be? Just think about it. There's one thing as a pastor that you cannot delegate. Mm. You cannot ask other people to believe God for you. You must believe God for yourself. I have to say that again. You cannot ask other people to believe God for you. You must believe God for yourself. As a pastor, you have to set the pace and the tone in the church and in the lives of your congregation. You cannot delegate faith in God. You can't tell anyone in your congregation to believe God for you. So I want to challenge you, Bishop Clive, Lady CC, to dream big, dream big dreams for God, for this ministry and for this church. 
Hallelujah. Dream big. Ephesians says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Hallelujah. Think big. Dream big. Hallelujah. Now, there are three parts to knowing God's vision for your ministry or for your church. There's the what, the how, and the when. Let me say that again. There's the what, the how, and the when. The first thing God shows you is the what. Okay? He shows you what he's going to do. Hallelujah. Oftentimes, the big mistake we make is once God tells us what to do, we're gone. We're gone. We took off. We tried to do it on our own, in our own time, and in our own strength. Guess what happens? We fall flat on our faces, and then we come crawling back to God, saying, Oh, God, I'm so sorry. What did I do? Did I miss the vision? No, you didn't. Absolutely not. You did not miss the vision. And God will say to you, No, you didn't miss it. You just didn't wait for part two. I told you what I was going to do, but you didn't wait to find out how I was going to do it. There's the part two. The part two is the how. Okay? We have the what. Now we need to, need to listen to God so he can tell you how. Okay? When God shows you how, it oftentimes is the opposite way that you even thought. Mm-hmm. And once you see the what and the how, you're still not finished. There's a third part of the vision. You remember I mentioned that earlier? God shows you when. We have the what, the how, and the when. I'm sitting here and I'm 65 years old. And the longer I walk with the Lord, I am convinced that God's timing is perfect. He is never a minute early. He is never a minute late. He's always right on time. Hallelujah. 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 There are three parts. There are three parts to getting God's vision. And I said that earlier. We have the what, the how, and the when. And you must be willing to wait for all three parts for God to work it out in your life. Hallelujah. You get God's vision by saying, what do you want me to do, Lord? How you want me to, how do you want me to do it, Lord? And when do you want me to do it? What do you want me to do? How do you want me to do it? And when do you want to do it? You need not stop praying now. God bless what I'm doing. And instead, start praying. Uh, well, let me back up. You need to stop praying. God bless what I'm doing. That's what I meant to say. And instead, start praying, God, help me to do what you want to bless. Hallelujah. The people of God must have a clear-cut vision as to the what, the when, and the how. Once they know God's vision for the house, guess what? Then they have a responsibility. I was flipping through this book, and it's called Redeveloping the Congregation, A How-To for Lasting Change. There was a quote that I'd like to share with you, and that quote said, Vision sustains us in hard and troubled times, reminding us of the purpose behind our work. Let me say it again. Vision sustains us in hard and troubled times, reminding us of the purpose behind our work. Now, having and knowing the vision can sustain us in hard and troubled times. It reminds us of our purpose behind the work that God has called us to do. Glory to God. Now, we know because we are people, we are human, we are flesh, disagreements can occur 
in any church over ministry, methodology, programming priorities, but having a vision can help the church rise above these issues to a higher goal. Now, a congregation is able to set aside many smaller issues when it has a clear picture of a future worthy of their sacrifice. You agree? A congregation is able to set aside a lot of those little idiosyncrasies and those little mediocrity things, or, you know, when they know, when they have a clear picture of a future worthy of their sacrifice. Hallelujah. When a congregation has found a shared vision through the leadership of a pastor whom they trust, they will make tremendous personal sacrifice and support him or her in making the vision a reality. And in this case, it's him, Bishop Clive, Lady Cece. When a congregation has found a shared vision through the leadership of the pastor whom they trust, they will make tremendous personal sacrifices to support him, her, in making the vision a reality. Glory to God. I like that. This Christian walk mm, is not only a walk of faith. It's a little, there is a little bit more to it. <sighs> this Christian walk is a life of faith. Glory to God. We've seen many people destroy God's plan and God's vision by quitting on God. Some run ahead. It gets so tough, gets so rough. Guess what? Instead of consulting God, they just quit on God. Running back sometimes to their old lifestyle, to their old habits, or even the devil that they're familiar with. Let me encourage you. Don't jump ship. Don't jump ship. Trust the process. Glory to God. God knows exactly what he's doing. I recall back in January 2019, I was on my way to church and I was having this conversation uh, with the Lord regarding trust and how much I trusted him to control my life. And I remember him posing a question to me and he said, Ann Morris, can I trust you to trust me? I thought about it and I heard it again in my spirit. Can I trust you to trust me? What an eye opener that was for me. Glory to God. We have to trust the process. Oftentimes it comes with hiccups, pain, disappointment. But guess what? We still must trust the process. There are some things we can do to receive God's vision. Let the word of God govern your life. Now, Hebrews 4 and 12, I know you know it. Very familiar uh, scripture. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Okay? Let the word of God govern your life. Another thing, renew your mind with this word. Renew your mind with the word of God. Romans 12, verses 1 through 3. I love it. For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. So we know, let the Holy Spirit, I mean, let the word of God govern your life, renew your mind with the word. Then I want you to ask the Holy Spirit for wisdom, for wisdom and just in case, you don't know what wisdom is or you have a little, you know, wavering on what wisdom. Let me tell you what wisdom is. Wisdom is the ability to make right decisions, to know what to do and to, to rightly discern the times and the season. That's wisdom. Wisdom is the ability 
to make a right decision, to know what to do, and to rightly discern the times and the season. One more. Most importantly, you need to spend time alone with the Holy Spirit in your secret place. Now, your secret place might be your private prayer closet. Wherever your secret place is, when you enter your secret place, when you enter the presence of the Holy Spirit, you enter the presence of wisdom. Hallelujah. Proverbs 4, 7 says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all that getting, get understanding. And one more, seek counsel from your pastor. Your pastor, mm -hmm, your pastor has an anointing, a grace from the Holy Spirit to help you, to lead you and to guide you as well. Don't go to your pastor and tell him what you're going to do and call that a counseling session. No, ask him for godly wisdom and counseling. Now, your pastor is not on the same level as your prayer partner, your fishing buddy, or even your coworker. God has graced them with a special anointing. Glory to God. John Grice wrote, Vision has no force, power, or impact unless it spreads from the visionary to the visionless. For the wisdom to have impact, it must be a shared vision. I love this. Let me say it again. Vision has no force, power, or impact unless it spreads from the visionary to the visionless, from the pastor to the congregation. I love this. Now, you know, the Bible provides us many stories where God has sent leaders with a, you know, with a very specific vision to do bold things for him. You remember Moses? Then there was Samuel, Nehemiah, Paul, Philip, Peter, and you can go on and on and on. And they were directed in important ways by visions from God. Now, let me, let me share a few with you. God's vision to Moses was freedom from slavery to the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. How long did it take this vision to come to pass? Does anybody remember? How long did it take for this vision to come to pass? 40 years. The children of Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. In the 40 year uh, period of time, can you imagine the number of people that died off? Yeah. So why do you think they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years? Moses allowed the people to distract him, to, de to deter him from God's vision. God said, you will see the promised land, but you will not cross over into it. Glory to God. Listen, I equate that to my life today. I hear and I can see the promised land. But by God's grace, I plan to enter into the promised land. When my life on this earth is over, when I take my last breath, when my eyes close and my uh, I take my last breath, I want to enter the gates, hallelujah, the throne of my heavenly father. Glory to God. Remember Nehemiah? Mm-hmm. God vision, God's vision to Nehemiah was to return to the city of Jerusalem and rebuild the city. Why? Oh. The temp okay, let me back up. God's vision to Nehemiah was to return to the city of Jerusalem and to rebuild the city, the temple, and the walls of the city. Now, Nehemiah had to overcome many, many obstacles in building a wall in the city. But he knew the reward, and he knew the reward, you know, the reward was so very worth it to him. He was tired of seeing the few Jews that remained in Israel. They were constantly being robbed. They were constantly, excuse me, being made fun of. He was tired of his people being the brunt of every joke. 
and the target of every malicious act of their enemies. It was time to build a wall for their protection and to give them strength. It was a worthy cause and a cause worth dying for, a cause worth fighting for, and a cause worth work, you know, worth working for. So because of his faithfulness, hallelujah, because of his faithfulness to the call of God and his tenacity, Nehemiah's tenacity against all odds, God blessed his work and the entire wall of the city of Jerusalem was built in, come on Bible scholars, how many days? Not years, how many days? It was built in 52 days. He had people who had the same vision, had a mind to work, and had a love for Israel and for God. Glory to his name. Then there was Noah. We all remember Noah. Noah gave humanity a warning. Mm -hmm. He told the people that God would destroy the world by flood because of his wickedness and rejection to him. Now, can you imagine the rejection? Can you imagine the mockery? Now, remember, it had never rained. So how on earth was it going to flood? It had never even rained. So how on earth was God going to destroy the world by flood? Mm. This is one of those times where I'm sure God said, well, I can show you, but then I can tell you. Uh, Noah didn't know those words, but God brought it to pass. Now, there was a way to escape God's wrath by leaving the world behind and joining Noah in the ark. Guess how long the vision took? How long did Mo, I mean, I'm sorry, how long did Noah build that ark? Mm, 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 mm. The vision took over 100 years to come to fruition. Can you imagine? Most of us struggle with a vision that doesn't materialize in a few months. Hallelujah. But God entrusted to Noah the message of salvation. Can you imagine? 100 years years. No one, no one other, no other human being other than Noah's wife, than Noah, his wife, his sons, and their wives did what? Entered the ark. All of the other people, people were lost. I say you today, say to you today, get on the ark. Otherwise, you will be destroyed when God floods the earth in judgment of wickedness and of mankind. I'm not talking about a literal ark. I'm not talking about being destroyed by a flood again. I need you to line up with the word of God. I need you to line up with God's vision. I need you to focus on the role that you play. We all have a responsibility. God you must grasp and hold to God's vision and run with it to completion. Christian Heritage Worship Center. God has entrusted to us as Christians with a similar message. Just like in the days of Noah, this world is coming to an end. We don't know when, but we do know that unless we put our faith and trust and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we will likewise perish. I cannot deal and go through hell, live in hell, and then spend eternity in hell. Absolutely not. We need to complete the vision of God. We need to complete the vision that God gave each one of us as individuals because we all as individuals have a vision. And in case you didn't know, to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. Hallelujah. Today is the last day of my consecration. Hallelujah. One of the things that the Lord shared with me was, my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me say that again. My life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus Christ. 
It is my heart's desire to finish the work that God has called me to do before he calls me home. And what does that take? Yeah, it takes sacrifice. It takes a right mind. It takes knowing the vision that God has for me. And when he said to us to go into all the world and make disciples of others, hallelujah, hallelujah. God gives us a vision to reveal the plan of what he's going to do. He expects us by his power to carry it through to completion. Remember the three parts of the vision? Knowing the what, knowing the how, and knowing the when. Knowing what to do, knowing how to do it, and knowing when to do it. Hallelujah. My prayer is that this message has touched your heart in a way that you said, okay, God, I am a part of Christian Heritage Worship Center. Center. I know the clear-cut vision for this church, for this ministry, for this congregation. God, help me to fulfill my role in the vision of this church. Hallelujah. And Pastor uh, Bishop Clive Joe, Lady Cece Joe, we are here to support you and the vision of this church. Hallelujah. Be blessed beyond measure in the precious name of Jesus. God bless you. I love you. And Happy New Year to you again. Glory to God. Thank you for joining us and allowing us in your home. It indeed was our honor to bring the Word of God to you today. May it grow in you richly, strengthen and encourage you. May the Lord be with you throughout this week. Shalom. Hello, and thank you for being a part of this ministry. One part of our worship that we are excited about is to worship the Lord with the returning of our tithes and planting seed as an offering to the Lord. We know that this is not a debt that we owe, but a seed that we sow. It leaves our hands, but never our lives. It goes into our future and multiplies it a thousand times more. Please take a moment to return your tithes and plant your seed as an expression of love and thanks to the Lord as we worship Him with our gifts. You may do so by going to the Givelify app and typing in Christian Heritage Worship Center. Pineville, North Carolina. God bless. Hi, friends. Thank you so much for joining us today for our experience of worship and the Word. You know, the Bible says that the Word of God is quick and it's powerful. And when we mix what we hear with faith, it has the capacity to change our life in an instant. So we pray that your faith was stirred today. And on behalf of Bishop Clive and Lady Cynthia Joe and all of us here at Christian Heritage Worship Center, we want to again say thank you for joining us. It's our desire as we are doing life together to fulfill the great commission of Jesus Christ. If you are looking for a place to belong, if you're looking for accountability in this season, we would love to have you grow with us. You can get more information about the ministry by finding us online www.christianheritageworshipcenter.com you can also send us an email directly we would love to hear from you pray with you agree with you at christian heritage worship center at gmail.com and for all of my friends out there in social media land feel free to continue to connect with us on facebook at christian heritage worship center and you can also find us on instagram so we've got you covered and we would love to love to hear from you until we have the opportunity to worship together again, may God continue to perfect and prosper you in every area of your life. Shalom.